Hello and welcome to those of you just joining us. You are here for There Really Is an App for That. Um, we are going to get started in just about one more minute, but I wanted to let you know that this session is being recorded. So you um, can feel free to leave your cameras off or on. The choice is up to you. If you're having a great hair day and you want us to see it, feel free to um, turn your camera on. Um, in the meantime, like I said, we're just going to give it one more minute. My watch says it's exactly two o'clock and I always have a few people that come in right at the last second. So um, I'd like to give them a chance to get started. But in the meantime, we're just super glad you guys are here. Thank you very much. On a, it is a very cold gray day here in West Michigan. So I'm hoping wherever you all are at is a little nicer. <laughs> And Denise, I don't show you with audio again. I don't know what is going on with your computer today, but um, we'll figure it out. I am taping this session, so I may have to send you the uh, video so you can watch it that way. All right, I think we're gonna get going. Welcome everyone, you are here for this. There really is an app for that. Um, we are super glad you're here. Like I just said, this session is recorded. So please, um, you know, your camera is up to you. Whether you want to be on camera or not, just know that we are recording it and it will be out on our YouTube channel. Um, and by our, I mean Area Agency on Aging and the Campus for Creative Aging. We are uh, two parts and we share a YouTube, a YouTube channel. If for some reason you need to get a hold of me, feel free to uh, wiggle your mouse at the bottom or top of your screen and you'll see a chat button. Um, just type in there and I will I will answer them as we go along. This is a very kind of a smaller group today. So we can we can be really flexible with what we do here. Um, so don't worry about that. If you have any issues and you need to uh, talk to me about more than just the chat button, my email is Amy Nichols at areaagencyonaging.org or just reply to the one I sent you earlier today. If we are hacked or Zoom bombed, um, this session will end immediately. And what that is, is when hackers take over, um, take over everything and then they cause you like major trouble. We, um, knock on wood, have not had any issues so far with that. Um, so I'm very, very happy about that. And we just, you know, we protect our Zoom links pretty, pretty tightly. So we make sure that they are, um, they don't go out to just any old person. So we shouldn't have a problem with that. All right, now let's get rolling here. So my name is Amy Nichols. I am the campus coordinator at the Campus for Creative Aging. And we are a part of Region 4 Area Agency on Aging, um, located in Southwest Michigan, which actually is in St. Joe. The Campus for Creative Aging is actually a physical presence and a movement. So the physical presence is this very cool building we built and remodeled to make it very modern and a cool meeting space and teaching facilities. And now because of COVID that's closed. Um, so we are taking our act online. Here you are, thank you very much. And we are engaged with making aided aging creative and fun and educational. So I hope you guys find this very creative, fun and educational. We are on Facebook at the Campus for Creative Aging and Twitter at the Campus for Creative Aging. And we, hey, have a website, thecampusforcreativeaging.org. Um, again, feel free to use the chat. If I go too fast or I go too slow, feel free to give me any feedback is great. I'm not, I don't take anything personally. Um, today's agenda, we're gonna learn what is an app, where to find them, why you should be using them, types, genres, the free apps. And if you guys have ever been to one of my other classes, I am, um, I am notoriously cheap. I just can't help it. I don't think I should have to pay for an app to do something fun. So I don't pay for anything. Um, what are the fun and funky apps? There's some weird ones out there and I've, I've got a couple for you. I'm gonna tell you what are my favorites and then I wanna hear what are your favorites because almost every single app I have on my phone, I have learned from someone else. So I figure that you guys should be able to teach me a couple of apps too. So let's get going on this part. What is an app? You know, um, interesting. I, I didn't even really think about what it was um, until I saw this whole uh, class on apps. And I'm like, well, it's just a little computer program that runs something on, on a smaller device. So your actual laptops and desktops have these um, and, and small um, computer, smaller computers 
have the ability to run these in the background and you don't have to have something separate to run these. So these are little tiny computer programs that are um, that run on a small device, tiny device, tiny program. They've been around since 1997. Um, Nokia developed the very first one and it is the snake game. All right, so I had to go download this and play it. It is really kind of um, the easiest simple game. If you, it's still out there. If you wanted to after class go log in, you can, you can download the snake game and it really apps took off when the first iPhone came out only in 2007. Doesn't that seem like not that long ago? I, I swear we've had iPhones forever, but so where are you going to find them? Um, easily on a smartphone and a tablet, you're going to find the app stores. So this is the iPhone app store. Google Play is on um, like the Kindles and um, Samsung devices. And then Galaxy um, has on a Galaxy, Samsung Galaxy will have its own little app. You go right in there and it's just like a little shopping mall of apps. You just pick which ones you want. But I'm going to show you, remember, free is best. Um, if you, if you want to pay for an app, great. You probably won't get, um, while you're doing whatever you're doing in your little program, you probably won't get ad advertisements and things, but I figure I never click on those anyway. So I might as well just let those run. I never, I can't even tell you what runs in an app most of the time. So don't pay for them if you can. <laughs> What's the difference between a Google app and Apple's app? Great question. So Google is just the device you, you are on an Apple. Apple Store, Apple App Store is only on iPhones and Macs um, and iPads. Google is just about everybody else. So if you're a Samsung or a Kindle, um, Kindle device, those will all be the, that store. It just, anything Apple is on an Apple device. Everything else is probably Google. So good question, Norm. So why should you be listening to these? Um, well, Free entertainment, again, cheap. Um, there's a lot of fun entertainment just besides games. Now, I know you guys like to play some games and I'm, I'm cool with that, but I'm, I also think that there's some really entertaining other things we could be doing out there. So um, maybe you could lose, learn something new. Um, it will break our boredom of this lovely pandemic when we're at home. And by the way, we're coming into winter now up here. So we're gonna have a lot of time on our hands. These are great for your brain. Um, I actually have one I use and I forgot to put in here. Um, it just occurred to me, I play this, this uh, word game every day because I know it's good for my brain and now I'm sort of addicted to it. But apps can be super helpful with um, directions and travel and things like that. There are as many app genres as there are um, podcast genres. In fact, maybe even more um, because apps are designed to to be a little more helpful than podcasts. Podcasts are supposed to be a little more informational. So there are a few more um, classes and one of them is this one right here with you see Cassiopeia in the night sky. I'm gonna talk about that one in a minute. Um, one of my favorite apps. So I went to my Apple app store and I looked up and hit free top, I searched top free apps. And this is what they gave me. So I'm gonna talk about those. Um, I changed one out, but I'll talk about that in a minute. So we're going to go and you're going to see the picture and the name. So if you wanted to write this down, you can write this down. Zoom. Hey, guess what? If any of you are on anything other than a desktop right now, you're probably talking to me um, or I'm talking to you via the Zoom app. Um, a year ago, this was not even close to trending. It was okay, it was fun, but it's not even close to what it's doing right now because of the fact that COVID made us all work from home and just, just be, you know, locked in. So Zoom stock went crazy. Zoom, um, I happen to think is one of the easier apps to use when you're in it. Um, but it's hard to see and, and do presentations and things on a small iPhone. I always recommend you at least get an iPad if you're going to do a lot of zooming because it's bigger, it's easier to see, and it's easier to put where, um, Put your finger where um, all the all the um, what do you call them? instructions and directions are. So I always recommend that with at least an iPad or bigger. So Snapchat, your grandkids, your kids probably all use Snapchat. You may not be on Snapchat, but I haven't. I happen to have a 75 year old friend on my Snapchat, and this is where you take a tiny little picture or a video and you send it out, and it lasts for like 15 seconds and then it disappears. 
unless you put it on your story, and we'll talk about that in a minute, but Snapchat was originally designed for a rather nefarious reason, and, and the pictures they were sending were not pictures I would recommend you send. <laughs> it was designed to be kind of a, a, a sex dating sort of app, <laughs> and, um, but then now everybody's sort of taking it over, and I mean, I, my husband will even Snapchat me from the grocery store. Is this what it's supposed to look like? Is this what you want? Um, we use it as just a more of a communication device, not as anything nefarious. However, now we're on that same nefarious, we're talking about TikTok. And if you've heard anything in the news lately, um, you have heard that TikTok has stolen all of our information and yes, they're from China and the president was going to shut them down at one point. I, I finally quit listening to it because I laugh. Um, if you have any a phone in your hand, you're being tracked somehow. They don't need TikTok to track, to track you. Everybody can find you. Everybody can find out anything about you. And so, you know, if you're carrying a phone around, that's all right. TikTok is little bitty videos. Um, they stay for a while. I can't remember what the time is. I, I promised my children that I would not get on TikTok for them and embarrass them. So I don't use this app <laughs> so, because they use it and they're in college and they just didn't really want me to be around. But it is kind of fun. You take little cool videos. There's actually like cool cooking videos. There's instructional videos on how to plant things. Um, there's some kind of cool fun there, but yes, it is owned by the Chinese. That's my caveat there. YouTube, very helpful. Um, YouTube, you can find all of our videos that we do, but YouTube also, you can search for videos on things. I took up crocheting at the beginning of the pandemic for something to do. And I learned via YouTube. I just kept playing the videos over and over till I could figure out how to do it. Um, there are many, many, many instructional videos. Um, every time something gets fixed at my house, my husband will watch a YouTube video to make sure he's doing it right before he starts. It's just a habit, but um, it's kind of a cool habit to be in. Um, you can watch all kinds of TV shows on video too. They'll be, or on YouTube, there'll be movies and like there's all kinds of genres in there. That one is an entire day of, in and of itself. Offer up is kind of cool. Um, it is a new free app where um, you offer up something for sale and, and you can put a price on it, but you can also say, what are you gonna give me on it? Um, so if you don't know what to charge for something and you just wanna get out of your house, you can start up a little barter with it. Um, and again, all of these are free. It's kind of a cool, fun little um, app. I, I caution you though, that when people come to pick up things at your house, you don't do that, that you meet them at the police station, at the local police station. And you say, I will meet you there. And we will meet right in front of there because safety is, is first and foremost whenever you're selling anything like that online. So Venmo. I just recently started Venmo and I have to say, it's my, I just love this thing. So Venmo, I, um, is, is an app where you pay people, kind of like PayPal, if you're familiar with that. Um, and you can search for people and pay people. I use it to pay for beach yoga. My beach yoga lady is on Venmo. So I just get out my phone and I open Venmo and I it, and her name will pop right up when I start to type in Roots, because that's the name of it, Roots Yoga. And it tells me, and it says, oh, you paid her $10 last time. You want to do that again? Yep. And it takes it right out of my bank account. I started it with a credit card, so I had kind of a, an amount in there because I didn't really trust it. I didn't know if online banking like that would be cool or if Venmo would get hacked, or, and it's been perfectly fine. I have had zero issues with it. The really fun part is that I can send my kids, who are all in college and all on there, a little surprise, $20 here, $40 here, just for a little something. So if you have grandkids or your kids that are out there that just need a little surprise, you could get on Venmo search their name and send them money and it will immediately tell them and they get it right away. The young kids today use this when they go out to eat, they pay one bill and then everybody Venmo's each other how much there's what there's what their meal was or whatever. So they don't have to fight about splitting it up with the waitress, which is kind of interesting, but my husband uses it. We, everybody I know is using Venmo right now. So that I highly recommend that one. Instagram. So Instagram is a uh, social media app and I didn't even include Facebook and Twitter in here because um, 
I think they're pretty familiar with this. This is the one that maybe you haven't used as much. And you can take your Instagram, take one picture, write a little caption about it. That's all you can do, really. But you can link it to your Facebook and your Twitter if you have one, and all the same message goes out on all three, which is kind of fun. Then you don't have to do three different things, on, you know, or do the same thing if you've got something you want to announce or say to people. Um, but Yes, um, it, it's true. So this is this is kind of a cool one. Um, I'm on Instagram at foodlady15 is my handle. Um, if you or my name, you have to make up a unique name. Um, and there happen to be a lot of Amy Nichols in the world. So I had to come up with something cool. And I like food. So I'm the food lady. And I was a food service director then. So um, that one's kind of fun. Yes, Norm says, yeah, on YouTube, he's been using it to take trips with your bike your stationary bike. That is very cool. Fun. I'm going to try to do that one next. Um, it's good for when you're walking. You can listen to things too. Um, this one in the middle is my new favorite, Skyview Light. I just went up north to uh, Mackinac City, Michigan for the weekend. And we every night sat out with our phones. This app, you open it, you hold it up to the night sky, and it tells you exactly what constellation you're seeing and what star it is, and Venus happened to be right behind us, and um, it, it, you can use this right in your own house. You don't, you know, you just walk right outside and hold it up, but it is really fascinating to see what you remember. I, I mean, I, you know, I could do the Big Dipper, and I could do that, but to find Cassiopeia, my husband could remember, but I couldn't, so we just, yeah, it's a fun one. And then there's Netflix. So I'm assuming by now, uh, most everybody has heard of Netflix, but I didn't know if you knew it's a free app you could actually watch on your phone. So if you don't have a smart TV in your bedroom or in um, somewhere else, you can log into your Netflix account on your phone or your iPad and watch it. Um, <laughs> Oh, you try, okay, so Denise has a question. I'm gonna stop for just a second. Are there instructions on how to use these apps? Um, yeah, so not usually there are not, um, interestingly enough, but at the beginning, there's generally, when you first download them, three or four little vignettes, they'll say like, you know, here's what you need to do here and here's what you need to do here. Um, so that you follow those and then there's always usually a little help button somewhere in the middle of these apps. Um, Netflix is pretty easy. It looks just like your Netflix at home. YouTube, same. YouTube looks like it log, like when you look into the computer. So when in doubt, if you're having trouble, um, yes, you still have to, you have to have a Netflix subscription. I'm sorry. Yes, you do. And, but you can use it on your phone. It doesn't cost you anything for free, extra, you know, it's just you logging in. Um, but when you, it, when in doubt and you're struggling with any of these apps, they all have websites and you can go to those websites and look at exactly what you want to do um, before you download it. Um, and it's, it's a lot bigger screen. <laughs> it's a lot easier to read. Um, but that's what I do when I struggle. So yes, you have to, oh, how many people can you share Netflix with? Well, let me see. At this point, I have my husband and me, my two daughters, and a friend, Caroline. So I'm going to say it's five. <laughs> um, you can have, five. that's what we signed up for. Now, I didn't, I have not tried to renew my Netflix in a while. It just automatically renews. So I have not seen if they've given up, you know, any more bandwidth to you on that. But last I knew it was five. And funny thing about Netflix, when you log in, you can change your little icon. You'll have your name with a little picture above it. And my family loves to mess with me. At this point, I'm some kind of scary witch wearing a crown. <laughs> so who knows what I'm going to look like next time, but you can do that as well. Okay, so here's the fun, really. Um, these things are a little, little crazy. So Sanctuary happens to be a horoscope app, um, but it really goes deep into like the, the horoscope stuff. If you're into any of that, you can do that. You can actually even get a private reading from some kind of horoscope person. I'm sorry, I don't know what it is. I just check it so that I can check the, um, what my horoscope is for the day because I think it's kind of fun. Tasty is all food and all food videos and how to make them. And they, sometimes they have people talking. Sometimes they're just little musical things and they show you what they're mixing together. It just depends. Um, ooh, 
And Norm, I don't know if you can change the country for Netflix. Good question. Um, I would assume you can. Um, if you have somebody in Canada and somebody in the US, <laughs> yeah. Okay, so this one over here is called Reface. And I gave you this one only because it's great entertainment to do if you have grandchildren um, or kids around. Because what you do is you take a picture of you together and another picture or separate from a picture of the next person and it will take your faces and merge, switch them and make them look like they really belong that way. So my, if, if it was like on my camp, my screen right now, I have Norm. It would take my face, put it on Norm's body and Norm's face and put it on my body. And it would look, we'd have the hair, the correct, it, it looks really good. They do a nice job with the merging of the faces. It's just something fun to play with. Tinder, Tinder is a dating app. Um, you might, you know, I don't know if I put this out here because it was in the, in the crazy ones. Um, Tinder is where uh, you put yourself out there as a, as a face in a little description and it goes out there and the other people sit on their phone and swipe and they swipe and decide whether they're going to message you or not. And then that's called the Tinder hookup um, if that happens. So uh, this one's probably more informational than anything else, but your kids are probably using it or your grandkids. Duolingo is actually designed for little kids, but it is an, a language app that I find super easy to use and um, not too busy. I think sometimes language apps get really busy trying to show you the whole sentence you're supposed to say and you, you know, I'm, I'm still hung up on was that a cup or a vase or what. Um, this one is really, really simple goes really slow um, and there's about, I think eight different languages you can use. And again, it's free. It does have um, in-app commercials for you, um, but very fun. Last but not least, Charmin. The Charmin people put out this super fun app called Sit or Squat. And it is free, of course, and it is, it ranks public bathrooms. So if you're in a city somewhere traveling, maybe we ever get to travel again, um, or you go downtown to go to an appointment, you can download this app and it will show you where the best bathrooms are and how they were ranked on cleanliness because nobody likes a dirty bathroom, I don't think. So I just think this one's super fun and they do a good job of updating it a lot. Like it has a lot of people active on it. <laughs> All right, so here's what I'm using just because you might be curious. So I'm gonna start in the very corner here. This is called Strava. And Strava is an exercise tracking app. And um, you put yourself in there with a little picture and you track your exercise that you do. So um, when I go walk, I start my Strava app. And then I, when I'm done, I finish it. And it maps out where I walked and how far I walked and how fast I did it. And then I can post about that. Um, I, it's, oh yeah, perfect. Hold on. I'll, I'll write it down for you because it's kind of cool. Um, and then my little friends that are on there can give me bonus points and kudos and kind of things. So I, we have a whole community on there. It's for biking. It's for walking. It's for running. I can even add my yoga in there when I want to. So, um, it, that's a little more difficult, but it can be done, but it's so easy. We just hit start, hit stop and post and it's out there. This one is Airbnb, which I'm sure you guys are all familiar with, but I'm going to write it in there anyways. Um, and if, oops, if I could type, it'd be all set. I have to say it gets kind of, um, it gets a bad rap for being, you know, people getting cheated a lot and some things. I have never once had trouble on Airbnb, not a one. And I find some lovely cheap places to go and stay that are not in a hotel, um, that are not with a lot of other people. So I think it's kind of cool. Pinterest is the time sucker of this entire page. If you want to kill a day, you could kill a day on Pinterest. <laughs> Pinterest is everything you ever wanted to know about anything, um, fishing to food. I, I have a ton of recipes on there to decorations, to how to stuff. Um, you just type in the search what you're looking for and boom. Um, the other day, my husband decided he's going to start making our um, uh, uh, sauerkraut again. He ferments it. And now um, I have about 15 different varieties of homemade sauerkraut. I didn't even know you could do that 
in different varieties until I went to Pinterest while we were driving home. So Pinterest is a fun one. Yelp. Yelp is all about finding something near you, but specifically it was designed for restaurants and how you could review a restaurant. Um, but it also has everything from dry cleaners to, to stores to whatever you need somewhere near me. Um, and you can just search dry cleaners near me and it will pull them up and they will be ranked as well. So um, kind of like the other app, the sit and squat, you, you'll get the best restaurant with the best reviews and it will show you how much the prices are too. So if it's an expensive restaurant and it has good reviews, great if you're wanting to spend money, but again, I'm cheap. So I always try to find the cheapest restaurant with the best reviews. So awesome. That's what that one's good for. This cute little guy right here, he's, I, I think he's supposed to look like a raindrop in a car, but I'm not sure. And he is called Waze, W-A-Z-E. And um, this one, you have to be careful about, make sure you have a passenger who's watching this for you, or you use your earplug to put it on your car's device. Um, it is a driving app, and it is really helpful when you come to traffic because it will, it will maneuver you around traffic like crazy. It will show you where the police are. It will show you where the accidents are, if there's a hazard on the side of the road, all kinds of fun information. But be careful that you're not looking at it while you drive. So make sure you have somebody else looking at it. One more caveat about that is that I've, I've threatened for years, I've, I've used this app I think for three years now, to call them and tell them that they need they need a female mode. And I say that not to be sexist. I say that because when I used it one time in the city of Chicago, in the, at night I got, got me off because there was a bunch, of, um, a bunch of traffic and it took me through the projects, which I normally wouldn't mind doing during the day. I wasn't so comfortable at night to be in some of those neighborhoods that I normally wouldn't have, drive, wouldn't have driven around. Um, and when I say through there, I mean through the parking lots, not just around the neighborhood. It took me there. So just be careful if you're driving at night and you're a female alone. I was playing it on my screen on my TV, so I wasn't actually watching my phone, by the way. Um, but my husband uses this religiously. He drives to Chicago every single week and back. It's about a two-hour drive from where we're at, and he, he gets all kinds of, like, it's perfect. He never, he's never late because he always uses that one. And last but not least is the big K, and that one is kayak. And this is for um, hotels, for, um, again, uh, airfare and restaurants, that kind of thing. You just type in where you want to go. It will bundle all three together. And, and I, I use this app hoping that we get to travel again sometime soon. But it does give you um, cool hotel deals and that kind of thing. And, and I like how, it, how it's laid out. It's easy to use but that's my favorites. All right, now last but not least, now it's your turn. Now you guys get to tell me what you are listening to. And I'm gonna stop this share right now so that I can see your sweet faces. And if you wanna just unmute and tell me what your favorite apps are, I would love to hear about it. Or you can type them in the chat box um, because sometimes spelling is, you know, it's a thing. So who wants to go first? Norm, you got a favorite app? Oh, I think he's typing it in for us, cool. Yeah, I do have a several. If you have an Amazon Fire Stick, they have apps on it. They have their own apps. But if you like movies, you have a ton of movie apps that are free. And if you go on a site that is uh, owned by a fellow by the name of Troy, so Troy has all of these movies. He updates them all the time also. And he tells you how to download them uh, on your Amazon stick. Now, they can also be put onto your computer as well and probably on your iPad. And it's amazing how many free films are on through these apps. Like Pluto, there's, a, there's one called Pluto. And there's, there's one called, um, I'd have to check and see all, all of mine, but it's amazing all that they have there. 
That's awesome. And Very they're cool. all free. Every one of them is free. And the funniest part about it is that some of those movies, I don't know how they're able to do it, but some of those movies are on a Netflix. And uh, they have the, these films all over the place, and I cannot understand how it's done. Some of them have ads on it. And uh, so they're paying for it through ads. But the, the ads aren't bad. Uh, they, uh, you know, they're not long, they're short ads. But uh, I am completely amazed at all this, you know. Now, if you go, it's called Troy Point. That's it, T-R-O-Y. And then it's Point, P-O-I-N-T. It's a website. And this guy has them all on there. And he explains to you how to put them on and how to download them and how, how to, you know. And, uh, but this is for primarily for the Amazon Fire Stick. Primarily for that. But it doesn't mean to say that these apps are not on your iPad. They are. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's cool. Thank you. Yeah. I'm going to have to go look it up. Denise says she likes YouTube's, oh, the stand-up com comedians that are not raunchy. Yes, you are right. Um, <laughs> most of them are from Provo, Utah, right? Um, and, and they're a little more conservative in their chat. Uh, yeah, no, um, I, I happen to like Jim Gaffigan. He can get a little, little bit once in a while, but I think he's just funny as all get out. Um, and, and he happens to be from Southwest Michigan. So I always do a little plug for us when we can. <laughs> All right, anybody else got an app you wanna, or tell there me what you're also, watching? There are also several music apps as well. Uh, again, if you like music and you want free streaming of music, there are tons of them out there. And some of them, for example, if you like, uh, let's say classical music, I don't know how many there are out there, but there's so many and they connect you to around the world. So you can put down, uh, laps on Mozart, Chopin, Beethoven, anything you want. Popular, classics, oldies, they're all on there. And again, it's free. Right. And Spotify, I didn't even get into. Um, yeah. But yeah, I mean, you can do Spotify, um, the one with the P that's just slipping my mind, Pandora. Um, there's a ton of those too, but there are in-app or um, commercials in them, which like yeah. I said, they don't bother me, but if you want to, if you don't want the commercials, you have to pay a little more. Yeah, but yeah, and yeah, well, the thing is with Spotify, the thing with Spotify is, is that if you subscribe, you can download and save it, and you can be offline and uh, have it. Uh, if you subscribe, of course, uh, then of course you have, you, you can download, as I was just saying. If you don't uh, subscribe, then you cannot download them. So you have to keep on going back on them. And you have to be online. Exactly. And some of them are, are also doing deals. Um, if you have any kids that are students, you know, Spotify has like a super inexpensive student app um, that they can pay for and they get Hulu for free as part of it. Um, yeah. 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 So yeah. Yeah. I've used I've used the Hulu account. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> That's because, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and you can get four or five people on Hulu too at the same time. <laughs> And the other thing is you people don't, well, some people know, but a lot of people don't. Your library has apps that connect you to various other sites and apps, and you can download movies as well and books, et cetera. And that's free. The only thing is with the library is sometimes they limit the number that you can take out per month, you know? So they say, well, we'll allow you five movies to download per month. They're connected to a few of the apps some of the libraries don't have it, some do, and so on and so forth. But if you are a member of a few libraries, you have a big choice there. Exactly. Um, I think that we, um, we are hosting this Health and Happiness Hour, and that is going to be one of our talks, is to bring the library in and say, okay, so tell me, what, what do you offer? You know, considering that they can't really have their doors open like, like they would like to be, and and, and they have expanded some of their services. So um, I'll make, just keep an eye out. I'll make sure you guys know when we do that one, because that one's really interesting with the amount of things they can do yeah. and the different variety. So, oh, okay. Carol says she likes Rain Rain, which gives you choices of different sounds for relaxation. Nice. Oh, that's Thunderstorms, transportation, even appliances. Okay, Carol, that's funny. I'm not sure Rain which appliance Rain. I would go, maybe a vacuum cleaner for, a, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> 
The rain would put me right to sleep though. That's great. That's good. Also, yeah, Hoopla. Mary says, map my run from Under Armour. Yeah. Um, oh, and the one that I forgot, and, and I haven't had a chance to talk to my girlfriend, she has a trail map app. It's mm -hmm. hard to say. Um, so wherever we go, she just opens it and it will tell you the, the popular trails and where they are near you. So we can go for a walk um, whenever. <laughs> Okay, Denise says, my favorite comedian is Wayne Perkins. Don't name your kids something stupid, <laughs> especially when he describes telling a story. I say this because I tried to name both of my children something stupid, and my mom has a stupid name, and she came unglued with me, which is why I think that's great. I'm going to send her that to watch. Oh, Hoopla, that's a good one, too. I forgot about that one. Um, Terry says that Libby is the free library app. She uses it. And that's literally how you can hold on your new books. You're right. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Um, so we have a ton of, uh, like I said, there is a ton of apps out there. Um, always feel free. I, te I teach this class kind of over and over again. So if you think of something after, this always happens, I swear, when you get off the meeting, you're like, oh, I forgot about this app. It's my favorite please feel free to email it to me so I can include it um, as one of the, um, and I'll, Terry, I will email out the name of the trail app as soon as I remember what it is. I'm going to have to have to uh, text her and find out what it is because it's really helpful. And so we use the trail app to mark our trail to, to see where we're going. And then um, we use Strava to track it and track ourselves. So she, um, my friend did 55 Ks runs in her year of 50. So we had a lot of tracking to do. So that's when we joined Strava to track it and see if we've gotten better as she runs, I walk, I have a fake knee, so that doesn't work for me. Um, and oh, thank you, Norm, troypoint.com. Um, so anyways, we used that and it was fun to look back at the pictures. We take a picture at each race and post it with it. And so we could see where we were and if we were getting any faster and where we went to brunch afterwards, <laughs> which we used <laughs> Yelp to find. So um, the more you use apps, the more they become kind of a, you know, a given in your life is what I think. Um, and whenever you, you have, find yourself Googling something, always remember there probably is an app for that. So awesome, you guys. Well, I want to thank you very much. You have been super fun. And like I said, please send me any of those apps that um, you uh, think about. Um, oh, I couldn't listen to how to access the library apps. Okay, so when you wanna go to the, you have to go to your local library site. Um, they, each, web, each library usually has a really good website. Believe it or not, they're, they're really tech-centered tech anymore. They are no longer just the books. Um, and if you go to your local library's website, it will show you how to sign up for it. Um, and then they, and then you'll know the name of it. Cause some of them use Libby. Some of them use, um, something with an M. I can't remember what it is. So it just depends on which, uh, local one your personal library is doing. And then you can download the app once you know the name of it. So, oh, Shazam. Oh, I forgot about Shazam, Carol. Yes. Yeah. So if you're singing um, along to a song and you're like, what is this song? Who, who did the name of it? You know, who did this song? You just open your app and hold it up to your radio and it will tell you all you want to know about it. Like, oh, you know, Billy Joel sung this in 1972 or whatever. And this song is about so-and-so and tons of good information. Then you'll get really good at name that tune. It's also good practice for it. Oh, by the way, I didn't even cover the game apps because there are a ton of them. Um, there, I, I, have an, I have an app I do every day for word searches. I have a Euchre app because we're Michigan people, we play Euchre, but you can play poker, you can play, I mean, there's just a million games and that would be an entire use, or an entire class on games and what kind of games to play, so. Oh, there we go, makeuseof.com, tag free movie apps. That is really cool, Norm, thanks. That's only one of the sites. If you do a Google search, there's several uh, searches that will show up various uh, apps or movies. Some of them are not so great. Some of them are okay, but uh, you, you have to try them all really, you know? Right. 
And that's a lot like the movies. Some of them are not so good. Some of them are great. Yeah. But it's all free. It's a freebie. <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you guys for joining us. Um, I will take this group chat and send it all back out so you have all the links in it um, because it, it's just easier to follow a link than try to write it down and remember it later. And like I said, please respond if you have any apps that we forgot about. So thank you guys for joining us. Thank you. All right. Thanks, guys. Have a great afternoon. You too. Bye. Bye-bye.